In this video, we're just going to quickly check this power supply. It is an ATX 500. I can't see a brand name anywhere on it. It might have been made in 2010 and it's a 500 watt power supply. It's very light, kind of flimsy, has been in a working PC, but worth just checking to see what kind of readings we get. And I'll also be um, testing it with this, but also under a stronger amount of load to see if there's much difference. So I'll just start plugging things in. It's got uh, 24 pins for the motherboard. It's got a CPU connector as well, which is just four pins. And it's got two SATA, two Molex, and then this floppy connector, which is apparently a Berg connector, which I found out by watching a video just the other day. Um, I'll link to it in the comments or description or both. Um, so let's connect up the hard drive and then the power cable. So it's off at the moment. I do know that this fan is um, noisy. So let's um, switch this on. Getting a 12.1. 12.1, 5 5.1, 5 12.9, 3. Bit of a fluctuation on 3.3, 3.4, but nothing too worrying. So let's put it under proper load. And I'll also clean the lens on my camera. Okay, so I'm just going to switch this off. So I've got this faulty motherboard. It doesn't work, it doesn't post, but it does draw quite a lot of power and the processor gets really hot. So um, it's a good sort of system to use to draw some load from this power supply. I guess the unfortunate thing is that I won't be able to see the voltages because I'm disconnecting this display and I can't get into the BIOS on this. Um, because, like I said, it doesn't work. But <laughs> we can power it up and see if there are any kind of issues. The main issue being that the cables are really, really short um, and cable tied. Got the motherboard, the hard drive. Um, should we get another hard drive? Yeah, we'll just connect up another hard drive so there's some additional load. Um, that's still switched off. Two hard drives, motherboard, CPU connector. I may as well connect up the keyboard and then we can see if we get any lights showing up. And we've got a cat. Do you want to say hello, cat? No. So let's switch it on. Um, uh, we've got the LED on the motherboard, but we haven't actually switched it on yet. And down here, uh, I think it's this one here. So we're using 75, 70, 70 watts at the moment. And I'll just see if we've got a heat sink somewhere that I can put on. Just put this on here so that there's something rather than nothing. Yeah. Did we get any lights on the keyboard or not? the video cable. We're not getting any signal. There's no there's no output from this. Um, 
Yeah, this this processor does work in another PC. Uh, this RAM does work in another PC, but this motherboard does seem to be completely dead. Um, even though it is drawing 67 watts. So, um, power supply seems okay apart from the fan. Should we have a quick look at that? Inside we have got a power supply. <laughs> this is what a power supply looks like. And Z Cheng capacitors here. I'm being very careful not to touch any of this stuff in here. Uh, the capacitors all look fine. And the fan can be unplugged. So we should be able to replace this fan, which is noisy, fairly easily. Um, interesting, you can see here, let me turn this around. You can see 3.3 volts, 5 volts ground, 12 volts V1, 12 volts V2. It's interesting how it's all labelled up. So you know what's happening, and then the sort of additional um, green. Let's have a look what that one is. Also says on the side of here what these are for. So green is the PS on remote, uh, black is com return, and grey P O K P G. Um, I'll have to have a look and look that up to see what that is. Um, and then there's also a purple, which is plus five volts standby. Nice when things are labeled up clearly. And then we've also got a fuse down there. Um, some additional circuitry here. Is quite a flimsy, lightweight power supply. Okay, so um, I'll try to find a fan to replace that and then put it back together and I guess have a sort of emergency power supply. This would be sort of not even on that power supply tier list. It would be in the replace immediately list if it was even on there at all. Um, looks like I've got a fan just lying around um, from probably a different PSU power supply. Let's see if this fits. Yep, that fits. So I think this power supply, uh, this fan is okay. Just needs a bit of a clean and I'll put that in there. The old fan is silence. Um, is that all it says? Okay, so I just need to sort of try and neatly put this cable through in the same sort of place that the other cable was. Um, and then it's quite a, um, seems a little bit of an odd fan design, but I'm sure it'll be fine for light use or yeah my plan is not to use this unless in some kind of emergency really or when there's literally nothing else available um but i suppose replacing a noisy fan 
delays this going into um, e-waste straight away. Maybe if I had a very low power system, I might use this, but I probably wouldn't. I do have other power supplies that are significantly better than this that I can use. And then put the lid back on. I forgot to dust the uh, fan in there. I should have uh, cleaned that before putting that back in. I don't suppose it matters too much. Let's just give it a quick um, noise check. Let's switch it on. So there we go. It's um, very quiet with this replacement fan. Thanks for watching. Bye.